Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that's gonna explain to you everything you need to know in order to successfully put the garden to bed for the winter time. Because it is the middle of October here in zone 5B, 6A, Northern Indiana. We've already had our first frost and now is the time to do uh, certain things that will ensure a greater success next year. So I urge you not to become uh, complacent or overwhelmed or to just blow it off, say, oh, I'll just get to it next year in the spring. That's not the way to do it, my friends. You want to do these 10 things now to ensure a much greater level of success next year. So let us get into it. You see, I made a list of the 10 important things. So let's just go through it real quick. And uh, I'm not gonna explain this stuff in depth, but I'm just going to go over it so that you can check it all off the list, all right? So uh, listen to these 10 things. And then, of course, let me know what I forgot, because I'm sure there might be something uh, that you're doing that maybe I didn't. But number one is the cover crops. So uh, we should be having our cover crops planted by now. So you've hopefully watched my video about do I need a cover crop? And then if so, I made a video about how to cover crop and uh, the things to take into consideration. So remember, zone six and above is crimson clover. Zone five and below is mammoth red clover. All zones can utilize a winter wheat or a winter rye. Uh, and all of that should be in the ground now. You wanna get it, uh, if it's not, you still got a little bit of time, so go ahead and plant it. Especially the winter rye, it can, it can sprout uh, even when it's like almost freezing. So get the cover crop planted. Number two, if you're not utilizing a cover crop, then by now you should be adding the fertility. And that is gonna be in the way of crop residue and manure. Now the crop residue is just how it sounds and I've made videos uh, illustrating this. We just mow down uh, the remaining parts of the crop and we compost in place so right on top of the bed we're mowing down the crop that we're gonna that we had there and that we're gonna plant there next year and then we're adding some manure we're adding some uh, wood ash if you're utilizing things like bone meal or blood meal go ahead and put it in now and we cover it all with the leaves so that essentially we're creating a mini compost pile right on the bed where we're gonna be planting next year that's ideal uh, also, if you utilize the grow bag method from my cheap and easy potato uh, growing bag method with the contractor bags, then you can do that one of two ways because I get a lot of questions about this. What do I do with the bags after I've harvested the boatload of potatoes? Well, you can do one of two things. One way is to take the bag over to a compost pile and dump all the bags out and then mix that in with manure and utilize it in the compost method. I'll be making videos about how to, how to set up your compost for the winter time. Uh, and then come springtime, you can just add the soil back into the bags if you wanna do it that way. Or the second way is the way that I like to do it. And I just leave all the soil in the bags and I leave the bags in place. And I just add now uh, a few shovel loads of manure, either chicken manure or horse manure or whatever you have access to, cow manure, it's all good and then we just let that break down over the winter time we also add some wood ash like i said if you're using bone meal or blood meal or whatever kind of fertility now is the good time to add it so you just add it right into the bags so that comes springtime they're ready to go and you can just plant the potatoes right into them that's a wonderful method and far less effort than dumping them all back out and refilling them so number three is your fertilizer should all be winterized. So if you live in a place where it freezes solid, then you need to winterize the fertilizers. Not because it's going to harm the fertilizers or the microbes, they can stand freezing because you're using indigenous microorganisms that are already accustomed to your specific climate, so they're adapted to freezing. But the barrel, the container might burst because there's no stopping the pressure of expanding water. So you want to, any of the barrels of your fertilizers, if, you're gonna, if they're gonna freeze solid, or if there's even a chance that they will, you want to drain them. So there's only about a third left in the container. Uh, and then put, that, put the liquid on the beds to help bolster the nutrition of the beds. But it's the worst thing, guys, to have your barrel burst, and then when you come back and it, it all thaws out, to have it just leak all over the ground. It's so disheartening. I know this from experience. So make sure you winterize your fertilizers. Number four is you wanna make sure you're saving seeds at this point. So to save seeds is quite simple. If it's something like a bean or a pea or anything with a pod, you wanna let it go until it's totally bone dry, till it rattles like, like, a, like a rattlesnake. And that's when we save the seed. 
Uh, if it's something like tomatoes or cucumbers or peppers or whatever else it is, we want to let the plant go all the way until the fruit is way past the point of eating, whatever the tomato or the pepper or what or whatnot. We just let it go until it pretty much falls to the ground and it's nice and soft and stuff. Then we harvest the seeds, rinse them off and dry them. Then dry all the seeds very well. And then we will put them in an airtight container and keep them in a cool location. Because remember, the enemies of seed saving are heat, light, and moisture, and air. And so we wanna keep all of those things away. So you, you can put them in the refrigerator. If you're in a warm climate, put them in the refrigerator or even the freezer works very well. There's various methods, but you wanna be saving the seeds uh, by now. So number five is your storage crops. So things like garlic, onions, potatoes, winter squash, sweet potatoes, dried beans, all that kind of stuff needs to be pretty much in its resting place by now. Because remember, what we're concerned with is storing food this year's harvest just until the next growing season. So we're just storing it uh, three, four, five months, some of the stuff over the winter time. And to do that, we're just going to keep it in a cool place, out of sunlight, and that you, you gotta do the best that you can. So my basement stays about 55 degrees plus, uh, you know, maybe 60 sometimes. And it's about 50%, give or take 10% uh, relative humidity. So, and that's fine. And I just, the potatoes are in a burlap sack. They store all winter long. And the winter squash and the sweet potatoes, all that stuff, it just stores all winter. So keep it as cool as you can. Uh, and that's gonna give you the best amount of success. But you just want to make sure that there's airflow. Don't have stagnant, stale air. Whether you've made a, a DIY root cellar or any of that, uh, you just want to make sure that there's airflow, not stagnant air. Uh, next, number six, hoses, drip lines, timers, all that kind of stuff. Your irrigation system needs to be drained of water and preferably pulled up because if you leave them in the field, the timers and all that stuff, they're going to burst when, when the uh, water freezes. So you have to drain all, don't forget all that stuff. Make sure all your stuff is drained and winterized. All of your things uh, to irrigate your system. Number seven is your season extenders should be in place by now. So if you have cabbages or broccoli or cauliflower or peas or something that you, you need to get a few more weeks out of, then you can do it in a very easy way. There's so many ways to make season extenders, but I just like to take two foot rebar, pound it on both sides of the bed and then bend PVC tubing, place it uh, into the rebar and then put plastic sheeting over the top and secure it on both sides. That's really all you gotta do. The only thing you gotta make sure of is that if it gets real warm, you have to roll up the sides during the daytime because it'll get hot in there. But at nighttime, roll it down and that's gonna give you another two, three, four weeks even on your season. Those kind of extenders work really well. So number eight is that anything that you have that is left tomatoes, peppers, uh, whatever else it is, peas, beans, you wanna get it all dried or fermented. So tomatoes and peppers and all of that are fermenting. And the cucumbers, you've watched all the videos about fermenting and the cabbages, we're fermenting all of those things and that's gonna store all winter long. So ferment whatever is left and dehydrate it. Do not just let it go to waste. Peppers, you can smoke them over the, uh, the grill and then dehydrate them and powder them up and they make a really good smoked poblano or smoked anaheim chili or whatever it is uh, then you can add that to soups and stews all winter so don't let whatever's left go to waste the, you gotta you gotta finish strong my friends so number nine is prepare your compost and your leaf mold for next year now i'm going to be making videos in the upcoming weeks about how to do this there are some, definitely some things you want to do uh, ensure for success, so look out for those videos. But I'm just saying that by the time the season comes to an end, you have to have your compost and leaf mold preparing, being prepared for next year, because it takes time. And also, your fertilizers. So if you haven't made the fertilizers already and you're just getting into it, go ahead and make them now. Things like the fish fertilizer, you can do in a five gallon bucket in the basement if you put the airlock on it. Well, like I showed you uh, in the video, you can do that in the basement. It's not gonna smell. With the airlock, somehow, magically, it, it just takes care of the smell. I, I'm not sure what forces are at work, but 
you can, uh, or if you have an, an outbuilding somewhere that isn't gonna freeze solid, go ahead and ferment the fertilizers over the winter time. And that's gonna help you prepare for uh, early spring and the upcoming season. Now, number 10 is you want to get your supplies for the upcoming indoor growing season. So I just made a video about the best way to define the space, in my opinion, is cheap and easy, is with the grow tent. So utilize that, it's a wonderful thing. And you will see as these videos start coming up in about another three weeks or so, we're gonna start doing videos about um, uh, mushroom growing, microgreen growing, and sprouts. And these, uh, for these, we're gonna need some supplies. So you can utilize the links in the description to get the tent or the seeds or the mushrooms. So the mushrooms, we're gonna start with the spray and grow lion's mane kit. And then we're gonna go to the uh, yellow oyster. Now it doesn't matter if it's the sawdust spawn or the grain spawn, but utilize the, gar the uh, promo code Garden Viking for 10% off, and that helps the channel as well. So, uh, and once you get it, you can just put it in the refrigerator until we start the video. So you're gonna learn how to grow mushrooms this winter, even if you've never done it before, I'm gonna really simplify it. I mean, simplified, okay? So also the seeds, the uh, microgreen seeds that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna start with uh, peas, like the Dundale pea or the green pea, and black oil sunflower, either the large or the small. So we're definitely doing those two, but then you can choose the other one, the leafy green, like the uh, broccoli, uh, kale, cabbage, radish are really easy, beets, any of those ones you can also uh, do. Because once I show you the system, once we're doing it, you can, you, you'll, you'll get confident and you can do any of the microgreens. So get those seeds. Uh, there's links in the description to the place that I recommend to get them from. So that would be great, helps out the channel. And here's a bonus one, number 11, garlic. We're gonna be planting garlic. Anytime between now and up until about Thanksgiving time is the ideal time to plant garlic. So uh, remember, you plant it in the fall time to harvest about July of next year. And what's ideal, after we harvest the garlic in July, we're gonna plant a run of bush green beans. That's the ultimate combination right there. So there's a secret method of the masters. So guys, that's it uh, for the most part. What did I forget? Leave it in the comments. Also, just leave a comment in general. That really helps the channel and I wanna know your thoughts. So if you feel like you gained something from this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget, Garden Like a Viking Instagram account. I'm trying to learn about Instagram, so help me out there. Uh, and also every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time, USA, that is New York time, I do the Saturday morning live stream where I take you guys' questions and we talk about all kinds of good stuff. So uh, check it out.